Let's finish those Italic non-inspired landscape paintings. Hello, my talented artists. subscribe you have worked so hard creating your beautiful landscape painting starting with using mostly organic shapes and being inspired by the wonderful Lebanese American artist Atel Adnan she used a very few amount of shapes in class I think we used your age to decide how many shapes you guys were going to use we were also inspired by Atel's use of fantasy colors. She clearly used whatever colors she wanted, and I encourage you guys to mix and use whatever beautiful colors you want. Another way to mix a color is scooping two colors into an empty spot. So I'm gonna scoop some red. And I'm gonna scoop some blue. I just need to make sure that I have enough of the color to paint my shape. This isn't very much, look what I made. I made purple. I think this isn't enough to paint my big bottom shape. I could paint a little shape this color, so I think I will. I'm gonna outline it. Carefully. Once I've outlined it, it's time to paint inside, making sure I don't have any lumps. And now I could change one of these colors. So I think I'm going to scoop some white and change this purple. Be sure to mix and mix and mix until it's all mixed. I need a lot of paint paint because I want to paint the big shape. So I'm going to need to add more paint. This had red, blue, and white. So I could add a little more of any of those. So I'm going to add a little more red to change it even more. Make it a different color. I'm stirring carefully. That's a lot of paint. I think I can paint the bottom shape completely. Carefully going on the edge of my shape. I can overlap. I want to overlap because I don't want any white spots between my shapes. I painted a line all the way around the edge of my bottom shape, and now I get to fill it in with any brush stroke I want. Now I'm speeding up my film so that you can get to your turn sooner. Sometimes we might need to switch our brush. A smaller brush is better for a smaller space. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to mix a color again. I'm gonna use a color I already have. And actually, I think I'm gonna move it over here. I don't need as much paint, but I still wanna make sure that I have the right amount of paint to fill my shape. So I'm just scooping and mixing. All right. I decided that I, I think the straight line, it looks like a water shape. Usually a straight line is watery. So I am going to carefully outline my shape. When the shapes get smaller, it does get trickier to stay inside the lines, but we're gonna try our best to stay inside those lines and paint each shape its own color very carefully. Even that little corner, that's tough. I'm gonna use the tip of my brush. So I'm gonna twirl my brush to make a tip and pull it out, twirl and pull, 
twirl and pull it out. So I have a nice tip. I'm gonna carefully aim like an archer and really look at my painting when I'm painting it. Carefully painting along the outline, getting more paint when I run out. I have to really look and see what's happening to be a good landscape painter. And now I have a nice smooth outline. I can paint it in. I told you I want each shape to be a separate color, but in my imagination, this and this is the same thing. They're both water. So you can make two different shapes the same color if in your imagination those two shapes are actually the same thing like those two shapes are my water all right my last shape my last shape i want to be really different so i'm going to wash my brush really well sweeping like a goldfish in a bowl rub it on my paper. Oop, there's still lots of paint on that. So I'm going to rub it on my paper. Oh, it was just this part that had paint. Okay, so I'm going to do some kind of red color. So I'm going to mix my red and maybe scoop a little orange in there. Ooh, wow, that turned red fast. A little red goes a long way. I'm going to scoop a little more orange and mix and mix. So what do I do first when I want to paint a shape in? What do I do first? Well, first I'm actually going to make sure my brush doesn't have too much paint. Then what do I do with the shape? That's right. We are going to paint the outline of the shape and we're going to go a little bit over our other shapes so that we have no white of the page showing. I need more paint, so I'm gonna dip it. A smaller brush uses less paint. I should say, a smaller brush holds less paint, so you need to dip it more frequently. Uh-oh, we're getting to a really skinny part, so I want my brush to fit right in there. So I don't want too much paint in it. I'm gonna sort of Twirl my brush, load it with paint, but I still want it to be pointy. And now I'm gonna kind of press it in there and drag it along. This is hard. I like a challenge. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now remember, if you start running out of paint, flip your brush. And if you've already flipped your brush, you need to get more paint. You can also twirl your brush as you're painting your lines and that makes your tip skinny. To make sure you cover all the white, overlap your paint. I'm painting a little bit over the purple shape. Now, whew, that was hard. That was a hard shape. I'm gonna paint that in. I'm gonna smooth out the lumps. I did it, yay, I think I got all my paper filled with paint and I smoothed it flat so it's not lumpy. Now, where do I put it? That's right, in the drying rack. And don't forget, our painting goals are paint each shape one color, keep the color inside the shape, cover all the white spots, and smooth out the paint blobs. Good job, friends. I can't wait to see your finished paintings.